Hi everyone, I just did a video going over Azure OpenAI deployment options and the resiliency. And some of the things I talked about were just covered in a blog article that Microsoft put out yesterday. Now, if we go and look actually at this blog article, it covers a number of really cool areas. So the first one it talks about is related to this new option of data zones. And this applies to both pay-as-you-go and also when I think about PTUs, provision throughput units. And really the big deal here is today, we deploy our Azure OpenAI resource to a specific region. That's where our endpoint lives. That's our core unit of resiliency. And then for each model we deploy, we have options. Now, traditionally, we think of standard, and again, this is both pay-as-you-go and PTU, which means the capacity pool for the model and the version of the model you're deploying has to be in that same region. So the, the scope of the instances that you can leverage is just the ones in that particular capacity pool. If you pick global, well, then it can go and use those capacity pools for that model and the version anywhere in the world. So you have a much greater chance of achieving the throughput you want to achieve, of reducing the latency of the inferencing. And remember with inferencing, the network latency is a tiny portion of the overall operation latency compared to the inferencing latency. So we care way more about having lots of available capacity. So our overall inferencing operation will be reduced, even if we're going tens of milliseconds further in terms of network latency. The challenge though here was if I had some kind of data sovereignty requirement, I can't let my prompt go to an instance outside of my geographical boundary. And there are many regions, for example, in the United States, there's some set of regions, there's many regions in the European Union. So what they're introducing is two data zones. So now when I think about it, there is a, US data zone. And there's also going to be an EU data zone that is comprised of the sets of regions in the US and the EU. So I get the best of both worlds. Hey, I want a greater set of capacity units to which my inferencing could be sent so I can achieve the throughput I want to achieve and I've reduced the overall latency, but hey, I'm still within whatever data sovereignty boundary I need to adhere to, US or EU. So this is a really nice addition. And again, I can leverage it for both my pay-as-you-go and my PTU. So this, this is a, a great new capability. They also talked about they're introducing a 99% latency service level as part of your uh, token generations for your provisioned throughputs. They're also lowering the cost of getting started. So when we think about those provision throughput units, remember provision throughput units are about getting a guaranteed amount of throughput you need and also a predictable latency. They are reducing the costs for that per hour cost, so Provision Global is going to $1 an hour from $2, and Provision Data Zone is $1.10. The reservation for month and year remains unchanged. And they're also decreasing the minimums for PTUs. Now this is for Global and Data Zone. So the minimum is now 15, and the increments are five for both the Global and the Data Zone. So that's really important when you think about hey, I might be a smaller application, but it's still important to me to have a guaranteed amount of throughput. Now, again, if you're pay-as-you-go and you use global or the new data zone, you have a way greater chance of having the throughput available because there's a greater potential set of capacity pools and therefore the greater chance there's idle capacity so you can achieve it. But even small apps may say, no, this is still a critical app, it's just my volume is lower, well, now you can onboard to PTUs. It has a much lower barrier of entry. So I can go and get that provision throughput. And remember, 
using global and data zone is still attractive for PTUs because within a specific region, there's a finite capacity. So when I try to do my on-demand PTU, it could fail if there isn't available capacity in that region. So by using data zone, by using global, even for your PTUs, you've got a way greater chance of getting all of the throughput you want because, hey, that pool is that much bigger. So it's still a great capability to have there. Additionally, they talk about the prompt caching, which I talked about in the video, but it's basically if the first roughly thousand characters of the prompts, it must be at minimum a thousand character prompt to the same, it can reuse the previous tokenization it performed on the prompt, which reduces the overall compute. You have greater flexibility to change the model and version, for example, GPT-40, GPT-40 mini within the reservation period. So I'm not locked into a specific model and a specific version. And then it just gives some examples of all the work that is being done. So a really great article. Uh, I've linked it in the description below. So you can go and check that out. But really great um, new capabilities. I think this data zone is huge. I think the lowering of the barrier of entry for the PTUs, the new latency SLA, uh, really cool stuff. Till next video, take care.